Social media content creator Alicia McCarvel went viral a few years back when she posted this video of herself and her husband to TikTok. At the time, loads of people were doing videos similar to this one. She probably thought it was cute, a little bit of fun. But this innocent little video made the internet lose its damn mind. People simply could not believe that a man as fit and handsome as Scott, her husband, could possibly find Alicia attractive, let alone marry her. It's a tale as old as time. Handsome. Do you guys know this couple? I see them all of the time. She makes like really funny, like they've really like moved into it. So they make funny content about it. Boy, look at that. I actually think it's really interesting how people are obsessed with the difference between their aesthetics, but also it has to do, I think more with the lifestyle compatibility, but people are also just really shallow. And also I think people forget that he didn't always look like that. He's been getting into way more shape over the years. He did not always look like that. Would you say you love your body? Love's a hard question. I'm Alicia McCarvel and I am grateful for my body. My relationship with movement is definitely complicated. Instead of people asking me how do you want to move your body? My life was filled with people telling me I had to move my body. I played sports, badminton, basketball. I played volleyball. I have a second degree black belt in Taekwondo. When I think back to movement back then, it was fun. It was rooted in joy. It was rooted in, in my choice. Those were things that I chose to do because I loved doing them. And then when I got into university, like most people, you, I was no longer competitive enough to play those sports anymore. I lost all movement. I did everything that I could to shrink my body. And then I did a bikini competition, which I was the smallest I had ever been, even at 127 pounds, which is what everybody told me that if I lost weight, I would feel better. If I lost weight, I would feel strong. If I lost weight, I'd feel good about myself. If I lost weight, I would be happy. And there I was, the smallest that I had ever been, in the worst health, in the worst mental health seat I had ever been in, the least happy. And the only thing that changed for me at 127 pounds was how other people perceived me not how I perceived myself. It wasn't until 2017, I think, that Scott, my husband, started powerlifting and he brought me to the gym one day. I think our first lift we did was a deadlift and it will forever always be my favorite lift because it was the first time that I got into a gym where my goal wasn't to shrink my body or to change my body or to look a certain way. Powerlifting made me feel strong and it made me feel like my body was capable of really cool things. That was definitely the turning point for me in realizing that I didn't have to feel shitty every time I moved my body. I choose to move by playing basketball in the court during the summer or by going for walks late at night or skipping or whatever I think is going to bring me joy that day. And that has truly been the biggest change for movement for me. Some rich, successful man marries down. She's ugly, they fume. How did she get him? He could do so much better. She must have trapped him. He must have mummy issues. In Australia, we even have a name for it. Punching. If you are told that you are punching above your weight, it basically means that you are in a- Also, if he wasn't in shape, and again, because I've seen past videos, he is just as attractive as her. The only reason he's more attractive is because he's in shape, but it's not because he's actually like they're both mid, which is great. I mean, aren't we all? We're all like mid. Let's be real. So I feel like they're actually equal attractive. If she was in shape, it'd be kind of the same. It's just people put a lot of emphasis on being in shape as a huge plus, which to be fair, does change how things look. But yeah, they're kind of like the same. If you really look at them, like they match really well a relationship with someone who is much better looking than you. You are the ugly one. And your partner could and should do so much better than you. And it got me thinking, is there something to this whole punching thing? What does attract hot guys to 
unattractive women? Is it just other people who are jealous and trying to bring said woman down? Or is there actually some kind of secret formula that these ugly women use to ensnare attractive men? Of course, on the other hand, it's seen as normal when an attractive woman marries an unattractive man. He's obviously rich or famous or has a big willy or he's in a position of power that could elevate the attractive woman's social standing. Nothing wrong with it, totally normal, totally fine, nobody bats an eyelid. But when an attractive or rich or famous man goes for a woman who we deem to be less attractive, less rich or less famous, we are left confused. I think what people are trying to say, and I'll say it in a less like shallow way, I just, I think they're trying to say like, oh, you don't match. But at the same time, it's not because you're ugly, but everyone's kind of uglier than someone else or someone's always prettier than someone else. But also when you're in love, none of this matters. Like when you're with the love of your life, it, it wouldn't matter if half their face was burned off. It just doesn't matter when you're for real, for real with the love of your life, not somebody you settle for. If you settle for somebody, you're probably going to leave them the moment they don't look attractive to you because, you know, you settled. People are shocked. It's an injustice. Like in the instance of power star Omari Hardwick and his choice of wife in publicist Jennifer Fouch. Not only was Jennifer not rich, not famous, but she was also ugly as fuck, if you believe her detractors. Then you've got Justin Bieber and Hayley Baldwin, for example. The Justin Bieber fandom was horrified when he married Hayley. He is Justin, a good looking, rich, talented. Um, Hayley is gorgeous. Are they insane? Hayley is so beautiful. Did people think Hayley wasn't pretty enough to be with Justin Bieber? male and Haley, who was somewhat less rich and less famous, but not by much, mind you. She's ugly, the internet fumed. He deserves better than her. He clearly only married her to get back at his ex Selena. Jesus. He couldn't possibly be in love with her. Then the fact that Pierce Brosnan, aka James Bond, has dared to not divorce his wife of 22 years because she has put on weight, had two children, and has the nerve to look a little bit older now with the age of 60 than she did when she married him at the age of 37, has really upset the internet. One one Twitter user went as far as to use Keely and Pierce. Y'all are too obsessed with other people's relationships. <laughs> like, I don't even know what we're talking about now. I mean, I get it, but like, I don't get it. I don't get it this much, you know? As fodder for a meme, which stated that this was the reason that no one should get married. Uh, has nobody noticed that Piers himself doesn't exactly look the same now as he did when he got married to Keely? As usual, we just seem to focus on the appearance of the female. She has to keep her looks, her body, stay looking youthful forever, which is bloody physically impossible. But of course, men can get dad bods. That's endearing and lovable, like a squishy teddy bear that you just want to cuddle. Grey hair, silver fox, very attractive. Lines, wrinkles, they're distinguished. It's such a bloody Discord says, I feel like ugly isn't the same as not as fashionable or not as well groomed in the moment. So the language is throwing me off a bit. Well, that's the problem is so much of how we even view looks has to do with a lot of grooming habits or other things or how people rate themselves. Like again, next to a 10 who's absolutely gorgeous, most likely you probably won't fall into that category. But lots of people on average rate themselves a seven because they're too embarrassed to rate themselves lower and they're too aware that they can't rate themselves higher. At least from what I've understood is most people rate themselves a seven, which is, see, when I hear that, see, example of my neurodivergent brain or slash, I should stop saying that because I just also think it's my values. When I read that most people rate themselves a seven because they were too embarrassed, I was like, I want to rate myself honestly then because I don't want to be one of those schmucks that's so embarrassed and insecure. I have to rate myself a seven. So I sound like, oh, I think I'm kind of cute. Then I have to think about what I'm rating myself on. Like right now, I'm like loving my side profile today. But I know that I'm not today's classic beauty style, but I also know that I'm hot in a different era. And then I also know that I feel good about myself. I don't know, like a six, maybe or a five. So like when I think about that, I'm like, okay, you're into it. If you're into it, you're not if you're not. But I would never think of myself as a seven because I know what a 10 is. I know what a 10 is. There's no fucking way. And I'm, I look good. Let me tell you, I look cute. Okay, have you seen my Instagram? My body's popping, my booty popping. If I had a more aesthetic face, like for the culture for today, girl, I'd be fucking a billionaire, okay? Realistically, I also know what a very aesthetically asymmetric or asymmetrical that asymmetrical asymmetrical a gorgeous face is and I know I'm not that high but also like it doesn't even matter because like when you're in love you love that person like they're a 12 but I will say weight does usually bring your your down like if you're fat or chubby your body just doesn't look symmetrical it just doesn't look as attractive because you're holding things on your skin that just don't make sense to the eye when it's observing it. And then if you're super, super skinny, it's the same thing. Super, super skinny and super, super fat is usually gonna bring down your attractive level, but only in observation of the tens, not an observation of what is what you're in love with. Like I love how I look and I think it makes sense that my partner thinks I'm a 12 in his eyes, 
but it also makes sense that he would rate me ob- quote, 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 objectively compared to a 10 and he wouldn't rate me a 10 because we know what a 10 is. Bloody double standard and it really pisses me off. Despite the fact that people seem to think that Keely is not attractive enough to be married to James Bond, strangely enough, he seems to be absolutely besotted by her. He certainly doesn't think she's ugly or unattractive. In fact, he seems to be more in love with her now than when they got married. He said himself that he loves her curves. He thinks she's beautiful. Mm-hmm. I found a great woman in Keely Shay. Not if I searched a million times over would I find one as good is what he said. Then there's the Danish footballer Brian Laudrup, who dared marry Metty. People simply can't seem to understand how these two ended up together. They claim that Metty is ugly, yet clearly Brian doesn't think so, and he obviously likes her because they have been together for 36 years and have two daughters together. And then there's Killian Murphy. I love it. It's because your partner is going to find you attractive. There's no way your partner is going to think you're ugly because they're the love of your life, not your settling partner. The love of your life will never not think you're beautiful. We are not talking about the same things. Like the love of your life isn't going to care if you're got half your face mel- like melted off. It's not that they're in love with your consciousness. It's totally different. But if you're talking about aesthetics, then yeah, obviously you can tell that like, oh, you're not the hottest person on the planet, but like you're attractive. And I do agree. Whoever said in the comment section, most people are fives. I think most people are average. Like most people are right in the middle. They're not ugly, but they're not hot, but they're good enough because everyone is kind of good enough. Human bodies are not that interesting. Even ugly people are like, it works. It all kind of works in the end. But I do think it's funny when people think they're very attractive because in my brain, I'm like, girl, how are you thinking that much of yourself? But also I think it's probably cultural. People, have you seen those TikToks of girls that are like, I'm a 10? Girl, you're not a 10. Wouldn't the true confident thing be to just acknowledge that you're not a 10 Mm. and being humble? because you want me to say that and I'm not gonna I'm well not you gonna. can say whatever you want no I'm not going to I'm, I'm a 10 I'm not I'm not I think I'm requesting I'm not re- need to, like get over that like I don't know why it hurts you that no I'm not hurt I'm not hurt well you seem like a little not hurt <laughs> just trying to understand the thought process yeah and I'm telling you I believe I'm beautiful I think every girl here is beautiful I think every girl here is a 10 every girl here is a 10 yes is every guy here a 10 too <laughs> But also your partner probably thinks you're a 12. So who cares? Because again, we're having two completely different conversations. We are not having the same conversation if you think you're a 10. You cannot be a 10. But obviously if you mean like falling in love, then yeah, girl, you a 10, girl. Killian Murphy, Irish guys. The furor surrounding Killian Murphy's wife of 20 years, mind you, Whoa. Yvonne McGuinness, was she's ugly. The internet fumed. How dare Killian find her attractive? I love how people, again, they wonder what, like, they dream of these superstars or they dream of these really attractive people picking them. They're not going to pick you, one, because you're shallow, and two, they may or may not be. But three, they're obviously dating for love, okay? And also, like, I don't know how much you want to be with a person who's self-aware. I would be so annoyed if I was with somebody who's like, I'm a 10, right? And I'm like, you're not a 10. Sit down. I Because it feels like a lie, but also it feels insane to me to rate yourself a 10. If you're a 10, you better be rich because pretty privilege is a thing and it works. So you better fucking start using it, bitch. Like, don't even get me started if you're a 10, please. But Cillian Murphy isn't even a 10. He's gorgeous though he's so gorge they've let alone marry her and i have to wonder are we looking at the same woman i know beauty is subjective and all but i think she is so beautiful okay so she's not kim kardashian or megan fox but i see gorgeous cheekbones soulful eyes beautiful smile i mean just look at this woman's bone structure i for one can definitely see how killian is attractive like if you look at his face like he looks very they look very similar it's just that people don't like like maybe her chin structure or something or maybe her, her lips turned down so people don't like that as much but they're very similar an aesthetic but maybe he's slightly more attractive technically but also they do kind of match to her. Not to mention, like Killian, Yvonne is a fellow creative. Yvonne is a classically trained visual artist who holds a master's degree from the Royal College of Art in London. Let's not be so quick to discount how attractive intelligence and creativity is in a person. Then there's Aaron Taylor Johnson. This one is a doozy. Okay. Ugh, I already know what story this is. Ugh. Stephanie says, how useful is it for people to rate their appearance? I think it is people more harm than good with social media. I think it's only harmful if you, first of all, have a breakdown. Like if somebody comes up to you and they're like, I'm a 10. I'm like, girl, you a six at most, sit down. And they have a fucking breakdown over that. They should have been more introspective in the first place. But also I think a lot of people are coping with their ratings. So I think it's an opportunity to know yourself better. Why are you coping so hard on being a genetic anomaly? Why are you coping so hard 
with aesthetic. Do the best you can with what you have and it's good enough. Don't be lazy, don't be a sloth, don't be these things. But ultimately, lots of people I think are obsessed with rating because they can't handle that they might be considered ugly or they can't understand that like lots of people who are picking you aren't picking you because you're a 10. It's because you're available or they think you're ugly enough to hit on. That's another thing. The irony being hit on doesn't mean you're attractive. Being hit on might be they think you're insecure enough to say yes. So it's about data. How does this help me understand myself? I personally think if you use it in the right way, it's very helpful. But if you use it in the wrong way, it's not. So let's say you're a person who's like, I think I'm like a three. But if I just change a few things here and there, I think I could get up to like a five or a six. And that's going to convey a lot of different positive messages to the people observing me. Then you can be somebody who like literally doesn't give a fuck. You have to decide what story you're in and like who are you in the story and what aesthetic do you want to play to? Like for myself, I did my hair today and I was like, I'm going to have fun with my hair today. And I did my hair and I matched my earrings and I feel pretty cute today. Like I feel pretty cute. Okay. I was like, I'm going to wear this high top shirt. So I have to do something with my hair today. And I like, I did it and I feel pretty good about it. But I know for a fact, there are tons of people out there that are like, ew, Brittany's so ugly. Look how stupid her hair looks. And those people are, first of all, not my people, but also that's okay. Cause I am here to vibe with my vibes. You know, the people that are gonna vibe. The idea is that the numbering yourself or figuring out how attractive you are is either gonna get you closer or farther to the truth. And I will say this, I don't know if there's like actually a 10 in the universe, so I think you could probably find it. I think it's more or less understanding how people observe you and how you observe other people. And also why a lot of these people can even be in relationships with super attractive people because they wouldn't be able to treat them like people. Have you guys ever seen the way people objectify very pretty people or they objectify very ugly people? And I'm using these words because I don't know what other words to use. But basically, either way, if you have a person who doesn't know how to humanize you, they're going to treat you like a body and that just doesn't feel good and i see that from so many people that are like i can't believe i ended up with someone so hot red flag if you think oh my gosh i can't believe i ended up with someone so hot red flag why are you gushing about ending up with somebody who's quote so hot that feels so toxic to me jasmine says that's what happens when your self-worth is only about your looks mm -hmm. monet says i try i really try not to think about my attractiveness in it in uh it is entirely too stressful and there is no real answer to the question i think there is, I really love the way I look, but I also know I'm not anyone's cup of tea. I really had to learn to love the way I look because I was always comparing myself to other people, which is normal. But I love the way I look. I think I look cool. I think I look timeless. I think I look, you know, ethereal. I think I look strong. I think I look a lot of things. I also think sometimes I look like an alligator and a witch. And I think sometimes I could scare a baby if I looked at it in a specific way, like if I made a face. And I think these are all good and bad things. Who cares? But also... There's nothing wrong with being ugly. It's not a moral issue. You're not morally bad for being ugly. That's why when we associate moral goodness with beauty, that's a mistake. Aurora says it feels like you're the prize and it's a very shallow connection. Exactly. Any kind of, that's why I don't like, oh, he's my queen. She's my, he's my king. She's my queen. Oh, I'm the prize. I'm the princess. Anything like that, toxic. Toxic, toxic, toxic. You are nothing. You are not special. You just are. For a multitude of reasons. His wife, Sam Taylor Johnson, really gets the internet's Nick is in a twist. Aaron's fans are furious that he chose her. They literally cannot understand why he would marry. Well, they're upset he chose her because of the age gap and how young he was when they got together. Someone who they claim is not only older, I mean, she is, but that she's also ugly. Now, I am not going to get into the age gap here. Let's just say it's... Yeah, he's obviously like more aesthetically attractive than her, but also it's not like she's ugly, but you know. A big one, and there was definitely some kind of weird power dynamic at play when these two got together, but I digress. Calling Sam ugly is just plain incorrect. Physically, she's got great hair, a strong body, lovely cheekbones, great teeth, and sparkly eyes. If you ignore our current beauty standards for just one moment, you will see that actually she's... Stephanie says, so what's the point of rating yourself at the end of the day if you're looking for someone with who you're to be attracted or who you happen to be attracted to and who's attracted to you today for fun, for data? If you don't care, if you put no value in it, then it does it, it's just for fun. Like, I don't know, my siblings and I, we're always all rating each other. Like, I'm like, yo, do I look like a seven yet? Am I seven? And they're like, no, Brittany, you're still a five. And I'm like, okay, you know what though? So I don't know, it's just kind of like normal conversation. I have zero insecurity about how I look at this point in my life. Like I have open conversations with my husband about it. I just asked him the other day. I was like, do you ever think I'm like, do you ever wish I was prettier? He's like, let me think about it. And then we sat and talked about it, which was interesting. And he gave a really good answer because, you know, he's he's good like that. 
But it was a really, it was a data question. I was asking him like a data question. I wasn't asking him like, a, I'm insecure. Can you fulfill this insecurity in me? I was like, I, I'm making a note about attractiveness. Can you tell me what you think about this? And if he had said anything, it would have been the right answer because it would have been honest. It's this idea, right? That people are so insecure that any conversation around their looks, they can't handle. That's why they rate themselves higher than they are. It's why they, even when they're insecure, rate themselves lower than they are. It's why people are afraid to have the conversations around beauty because they're insecure. And I'm saying fight the insecurity so you can have the conversation because the conversation is so much more interesting unless you don't wanna have it. That's great too. But yeah, I just think it's interesting, especially in, in bu bu it was a, the reason I asked my husband that question is because there's a boy bubble in which they're afraid to bring women around their boys if the boys think they're ugly. And I was like, did you, were you ever afraid to like have me in front of your friends or show your friends, you know, how I looked? And we had those conversations because I'm just trying to figure it out. Like, it's just interesting. Jester says, are you saying beauty is objective? Just trying to understand. I think there's always going to be an objectivity that we can we don't have access to. We've had a whole live stream about this before. I do think attractiveness is objective. And I think beauty is subjective. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder and attractiveness is objective. Does that make sense? But what you're attracted to is subjective. So what you are attracted to is subjective. What you find beautiful is subjective. What is attractive, I think, is objective. Have you ever seen a racehorse or like a beautiful horse? And you're like, holy fuck. Fun fact, in doing research for this segment, I found out on the Stephen Colbert show seven years ago, Frederick the Great, the most handsome horse ever, was actually featured. And I can't show it to you because of copyright, but I have a bunch of photography that his owner took. So check it out. That is a beautiful fucking horse. And then you see another horse and you're like, ah, it's just a horse. If we can know that animals are beautiful and we are animals, girl, I know whether or not you are a high end specimen or not. Human beings can be seen as a species that's like a high level species. Usually you have to be in shape, usually you have to be symmetrical. Usually you have to be healthy. Usually you have to have like healthy hair and glowing skin. That's why obesity isn't seen as attractive, though it can be beautiful. That's why when people say obesity isn't beautiful or like fatness in general or chubbiness isn't beautiful, I'm like, well, that's, you can't say that. But you can say they wouldn't be the high end of the specimen totem pole. Because if you're looking at like a, 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 a purebred, yeah, maybe the chubby person's not gonna be the most attractive. But you can't say they're not beautiful because that, that is subjective. Otis says there's research backing this up. At least some aspects of attractiveness seem to be universally appreciated. Symmetry, for sure. For sure. <laughs> Vosh moment. Oh no, don't. <laughs> Every time I think of horses now, I'm like, Vosh has been summoned. <laughs> Anyways, anyways, oh gosh, stop. Very, very attractive. Now, I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh, looks aren't important. Looks don't matter. Of course, looks matter. Being physically attracted to your partner is pretty important. And here's the real kicker. Some people don't determine what they find to be attractive in the opposite sex based on physical attributes at all. Some men really couldn't give a shit what color your hair is or how big your nose is or how flat your belly is or how big your butt is. Believe it or not, some people are actually attracted to intelligence. Some might value humor or kindness, creativity, empathy. It's almost like there's more to women than what we look like. I posted a simple transition video of me and my husband going from towels to dressed up together. This is not unlike what all kinds of different couples do on this app. My video went viral and I know we all know why. It's because by beauty standards, we don't make sense. And since we don't add up, people try to add things to my side of the equation to make it make sense by saying things like, oh, she must not have been fat when they met, or oh, she's got to be rich. Bro. Or they try to decrease <laughs> his side of the equation by saying things like, he must be gay, or he fetishes fat women. I get asked this question all the time. Do you get jealous when people hit on your husband? And my answer is always no. That's because when people typically slide into his DMs, they're leading with their body first. <gasps> and on the scale of what my husband values, how well my body fits into the beauty standards is not on the top of his list. He values my humor and my commitment and my love and my... You know what's funny about this is because I've been getting muscles. People have asked me like, oh, is your husband okay with you bulking? And I'm like, yes. And they're like, yeah, but like most men don't want women with muscles. And I'm like, okay, well, I didn't marry most men. I married an exceptional man who was attracted to me. So, and they're like, yes, but like, don't you think he'll like find you less attractive and fall out of love with you? No. And I get what they're saying because it's true that some men and some cultures won't find women with muscles attractive, but I didn't marry those men. I married my man who's a woman. <laughs>
my caring heart. So when someone slides into his DMs leading with their body first, he's asking, but what else? Because he, like I, know that people's values don't lie in how well their bodies fit into society's trash beauty standards. And if you guys need proof that looks aren't all that when it comes to a relationship. How many times have we seen women in the public eye who by all intents and purposes look about as perfect as a woman can look? Who ends up with a partner who disrespects her, cheats on her, or leaves her? Sure, she was beautiful, but ultimately looks alone cannot carry a relationship. Look at Emily Ratajkowski for example. Absolute stunner. Practically perfect in every physical way possible. Husband cheated. Angelina Jolie, mm -hmm. one of the world's most beautiful women, cheated on. Victoria Beckham, cheated on. Kylie Jenner, also cheated on. Gwen Stefani, she got cheated on too. Being conventionally beautiful. Is well, because it's not about, it's about values. Like ultimately this isn't about being pretty. To think that beauty is the reason men don't cheat on you is why you're in shitty relationships. It's great and all, but if that's all you have going for you, sorry, but that's gonna get boring pretty quickly. The reason why those women that you consider ugly or unattractive or who don't fit the standard or societal ideals of beauty often get the best men and get treated the best is because they have more to offer than looks. They have more to bring than just their bodies and they have more to give than just their goodies. This is why humans are multifaceted. We are so much more than our looks alone, which in today's day and age is great news. If you have been looking in the mirror and feeling down about yourself because you're like, I don't fit the beauty standard. I don't have a slim thick body. I'm not a size zero. Take heart my friend, because what makes you beautiful encompasses so much more than just your physical appearance. The thing that most people seem to forget is that you could be the most attractive person in a room and yet not everyone in that room is going to find you attractive. Say there's 10 people in the room, six might think you're a babe and then the other four might be like, eh, she's not my type. I think Michelle was the most attractive. How she looked, how she carried herself and it just seems like someone that's going to live an exciting life, I guess you could say, or that you could have like a deep conversation with. I think that Maria was the most attractive for me. It was just like her whole vibe and like I liked how her hair was, how her makeup was done. Like she looked very nice. It doesn't mean you're ugly, it just means that beauty is subjective. I know it sounds cliche, but beauty really is in the eye of the beholder. And what one person finds attractive, another might find ugly. Looking like Kendall Jenner or Megan Fox is not the only way to be attractive. These women look nothing like the quote unquote hot girls of today, and yet their partners think they are the hottest women in the world. They may not fit society's standard of beauty, but they fit their because like companionship and partnership and all of those things, those are so much more than we understand. Like that's why I'm saying y'all are settling for your relationships. Then's standard of beauty. And if that is not the very definition of beauty is in the eye of the beholder, then I don't know what is. For example, and I'm talking men here, but you could apply this logic to any gender. Some men appreciate curves. Others prefer an athletic body. Some men like women with curly hair and True. others prefer- My curly hair puts me less attractive for some people. A straight. Some like blondes, others like brunettes. You get what I'm saying here. What makes someone attractive is actually a combination of all these things that contribute to someone's overall appeal. Have you ever met someone and you're just like, they are so hot. Even though on paper, they may not technically be your type and you can't really put your finger on what makes you find them so attractive. But there's just something about them, like a, an X factor, a certain je ne sais quoi, that makes you find them so damn hot. Because that's the thing, my friends, you don't have to be the prettiest girl in the room. You don't have to meet society's unrealistic standards of beauty to be drop dead gorgeous. Sure, looks are interesting, but looks also fade. And if you are relying solely on your looks to get you a life partner, I'm sorry, but you're gonna be sorely disappointed. Mm. Do you know what doesn't fade? A sense of humor, intelligence, creativity, kindness, passion, ambition, empathy, the shape of your body, the color of your hair, the size of your belly, like literally all that pales in comparison. So why do ugly women attract hot men? Well, Here's a novel idea, perhaps they're not ugly at all. They may not be your cup of tea and that's fine, but their partner thinks they're a stunner. Mm. And just perhaps these women have more to them than just their face or their body. Maybe, just maybe, they attracted these attractive men because they have epic personalities. Maybe they get along with each other. Maybe they share a similar sense of humor or they get along with each other's families or they have similar life stories or they share similar ethics. The idea that physical attractiveness is the sole factor in attracting a partner is quite frankly, simply not accurate. So many factors contribute unless you're playing that game. There is a bubble that plays that game and I don't think I need to worry about it. Like it's their business, but like I'll never be in that bubble. You know what I mean? There is a bubble that expects your partners to stay in certain shape or I was watching, um, uh, what's Sexton, James Sexton. He was talking about in the diary of the CEO, he was talking about a prenup that this guy tried to do, which basically would motivate his wife to stay in shape. And for every pound, 
she gained during the marriage, if they got divorced, she would lose 10K. And I think that that's fine in that bubble. I don't give a fuck, but thank God I'm not in it. Panda Bus has pheromones to play a big factor too. I don't know if humans actually like register pheromones in the same way that animals do, but I will say there's a smell to people. And I do think that smell is key with choosing a partner. Man, I'm really, we're the homo, the fat phobic people are really coming out today and I'm blocking all of you. If you're in any way fat phobic, if you write anything in my comment section about Ew, fat people, I will block you. Tribute to attraction. An attractive man may be attracted to a woman not because of what she looks like at all. He might find himself drawn to her because she possesses qualities that he himself values. And here's the crux of it. A woman doesn't need to have an Instagram body or a tweakmented face or big boobs or big butt or big pouty lips. She doesn't need to look perfect by society's beauty standards in order to deserve a man who others may think is too rich or too good looking or too successful for her. Relationships and people are complex and multi faceted and the dynamics of attraction are influenced by a multitude of factors far beyond physical appearance. It is interesting sort of the emphasis we put and again if you want my model of relationship it's definitely about the full package. It's about loving the consciousness for who they are and yes even if you think their body is who they are and that's what they are and that's everything that that is a part of that full package. It depends on how you view people right. It depends on how you view people and that's about you. It's always about you. Not about them, but about you. Thank you.